I'm speaking today with Mang Mang Tan, who's the secretary of the Australian Coalition for Democracy in Burma. Mang Mang Tan is also a veteran of the student uprising, the Burmese student uprising in 1988. And he, together with other activists, is planning an action on March 27 to mark Burmese Revolution Day. There will be actions in Burma and all around the world at this time. Let's tell us a bit about your beginnings of your involvement in this movement. Uh, I was a student at the Institute of Economics um, and I started to get involved with the student protests in the early days of uh, 1988. Uh, so it uh, involved it evolved into a, a popular uprising later on in uh, August. It is known as 8888 Uprising in Burma in 1988. Today you're still an activist, many years later. Um, <laughs> and I understand that uh, you are planning some activities very soon, March 27, to commemorate uh, Burmese Revolution Day. Can you please explain what Burmese Revolution Day is all about? Uh, it was uh, the day of uh, uprising against the Japanese uh, occupation of Burma in 1945, where actually the three forces uh, involved in the movement, the, the BIA, the, the army, and the AFEFL, the political party, and the fascist party, and the communist party of Burma, and it became uh, a national uh, upri armed uprising, driving out the Japanese out of Burma. So we marked this date. At the same time, we also raised awareness on the revolution against this current fascist Burmese military that is a uh, ruling the country at the moment, after the coup in 2021, 1st of February. For many years, uh, the Burmese military regime or military regimes have uh, have used Burma Revolution Day as a celebration of their of their own military. Yeah, it, but it they was, have a they have a mixed history. Yes, yeah, the, they the, the military use it to promote their own integrity in the country, uh, sometimes in the middle of the BSPP, Rubami Socialist Program Party rule, uh, led by General Ne Win, and they changed the name of the country, the, the, the Revolution Day from Anti-First Revolution Day to uh, Armed Forces Day, just to serve their own interests. But after the latest coup, uh, March 27 became a date for a new popular uprising. Yes, that's right. People gather around on the day inside Burma and outside Burma uh, to call for a revolution, to keep a fight, to, to increase the fight against this uh, military dictatorship on the day of March 27. It is a revolution day. Do you expect there will be some uh, protests or actions in Burma on March 27 this year? Yes, yes. It, it, it's been around. It's been happening uh, in years before, and uh, I hope, I, I, I'm sure it's going to happen this time again because the people's resistance is very active and ongoing across the country. Now, tell us about the current state of the freedom struggle in Burma? The uh, current state of freedom struggle is uh, mainly the armed struggle led by the ethnic armed forces and the People's Defense Force in the mainland. Uh, at the same time, we still have a nonviolent political struggle uh, you know, here and there in, in major uh, city urban areas. But in, in the rural area and on the mountain, on the east and the west and the north, we have very uh, active, very strong uh, armed uh, resistance fighting against the 400,000 
strong military force? Uh, according to uh, the reports and what the leaders of the ethnic revolutionary forces and the, the PDF and NUG National Unity Government are saying, we are winning over 50 percent. So, in 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 physical measurement, we are taking over two thirds of the country under the resistance forces in control or under influence, right? So the military, we should say, only control one third of the country, mainly in Rangoon, Mandalay, and the capital, Nepido. You know, even, even those areas, we still have ambush and bombs attack and hit and run and rocket attack going on in those area by the underground arms movement. What about the role of the various governments in the region in relation to, to the, the coup regime? China, ASEAN, and even Australia? And I would say three uh, categories, the China, Russia, and ASEAN, and Australia uh, operating in different mood. The China and Russia, they are blindly, they blindly backing up the military regime uh, without any uh, critical or criticism toward the human rights abuses or entire you know, destruction of the whole population committed by the military. Because China, both China and Russia have their own interests uh, invested in the military regime to uh, stay a role, to, to play a role in the region or dominating the region. And the ASEAN is very divided. Uh, they have five points common, you know, uh, uh, agreement. The five point rules actually um, plan to, to try to uh, play a kind of reconciliation or to diffuse the tension or to get together all sides uh, to sit in a table or uh, reconciliation. But it, it is very funny, the military regime they just ignore there's any attempt by the ASEAN leaders. So the response is very uh, divided again. The Indonesian president it's very critical of the behavior of the Burmese regime, General Meole, and Brunei, very critical, and, and East Timor very strongly against the regime. He's in the last United Nations Congress, uh, President Ramos orders that uh, Burma should be treated as a Ukraine or international community. So now Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim uh, came out very strongly uh, criticizing the Burmese regime, or even he even demand to expel the Burmese uh, membership from the ASEAN. Uh, Australia is a bit pathetic, I would say. It's very late in taking action against the regime. And in the last February the 1st, Australian new uh, government imposed uh, some sort of targeted sanction against the members of the military regime, but in very limited uh, level and very soft compared to what other countries are doing, Americans and Europeans and other democracies are taking much stronger action since the beginning of the coup. So I was say, and it is very sad to hear that the whole delay was because of Sean Turner, my professor at the University of Macquarie. And since when he was there in detention, the Australian government tried not to, not to do anything hard against the regime just because of Professor Sean Turner was there in detention. So I just upset about it. <laughs> So, to be clear, Australia's limited sanctions have come two years. Yeah, two very years late. After. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's Australia's record. What should the Australian government be doing? Australia should 
impose a total sanction against the Burmese regime. And Australia should uh, learn from the American uh, uh, action against the regime. Like in America, they got NDA and Palmer Act and whole, whole set of, you know, uh, punish, punishment against the military regime and the European Union and the UK and Australia must go along with those democracy and against taking action against the military regime and the embassy they, they're illegally occupied by the military regime there so Australia should expel all the stuff from the Burmese military embassy right there and shut it down Thank you.